Hello, thanks for joining us on the program. And I'd like to thank James Green for hosting the show last week. Well, today we took a bit of a sail and we're on Salt Spring Island. It's just gorgeous out here, far away from Cambodia. But there's an interesting connection between the two places. We'll tell you about it today. Thanks for joining us on Go Island, Cowichan Valley. On today's show, the wonders of our natural world, bamboo in the bathroom, you'll meet a teenage inspiration, and the link from Salt Spring Island to Cambodia. All that and more on Go Island, Cowichan Valley. Ross King is a changed man since departing in early 2014 for what started out as a relaxing trip to Singapore to visit relatives. A side trip to Cambodia has brought the former professional engineer out of retirement. From his idyllic home on Salt Spring Island, he works several days a week. He's become an entrepreneur of sorts, and he cannot get the children of Cambodia out of his mind. A warning. Some of the images in our story may be disturbing to some viewers as they reflect history about those who were killed during the Cambodian Civil War. We were in uh, the city of Siem Reap for the Angkor Wat temples, which are magnificent, one of the great wonders of the world. And there was a side trip uh, put on by Viking Tours, which took us to uh, this rural school some distance outside uh, Siem Reap. And uh, there we found this um, amazing institution that had been started by uh, a monk in his home village. He wanted to bring back to the village something from his travels in the world and his knowledge and experience. And uh, for the last six and seven years, he's been developing a school absolutely from grassroots using nothing but local resources. And bear in mind that there aren't any teachers in rural Cambodia. So the few people who could speak English uh, taught other kids to speak English. And as those kids started to get older, the kids would te the, uh, teach the younger kids English, all in a dirt compound with uh, buildings made by the, by the local villagers with hand-hewn wood. And uh, uh, it was a complete su sustainable grassroots operation, which I found absolutely admirable and heartwarming. Ross was immediately aware of the fun the children were having, meeting so many people from other parts of the world. They sang me a song and they all crammed into this classroom and there were four kids to a desk that was made for, old fashioned wooden desk that was made for two. Classroom was uh, crammed. They live from hand to mouth. It's a, so they have nothing, these people. The story of the Cambodian people was also documented in the 1984 British drama the Killing Fields, and highlighted atrocities committed by the Khmer Rouge. Two to three million Cambodians out of about, I think, seven or eight million were killed as a result of the Khmer Rouge atrocities. They were driven out of the cities. All the middle classes and professional classes were wiped out by them. It was a fundamentalist, Maoist, back to, back to an agrarian economy, um, operation by the Khmer Rouge. Millions died of starvation uh, or were tortured to death. Um, and the country was gutted of its middle classes. Uh, the teachers were exterminated along with everyone else because they were intelligentsia. The last shot was fired in 1999. Um, it dragged on until then and they've been struggling to recover since then without the and there's a hole demographically, you know, where the, you know, the grandparents and the parents would be. And so, there are, thank goodness, the, the birth rate is quite high. Uh, they, have been, you know, they had to start with this lacking leadership from the elder generations. As Ross discovered, the need for education is critical, and teachers have now come from other parts of the world. We'll find out how Ross is becoming somewhat of a Canadian ambassador for the children of Cambodia later in our program. We'll be back after a short break to tell you more about how Cambodia really changed Ross King's life. And look at this, more or less a working ship's wheel, along with all kinds of wonderful photographs of the ships and sailing boats that came into the Ganges Harbour in the early 1900s here on Salt Spring Island. 
Well, we're going to take a short break, and after that, something new for your bathroom. Karen Elgersma sat down with an entrepreneur from Shawnigan Lake who wowed the dragons on CBC's hit show, Dragon's Den. And now his green products have taken the world by storm. Coming up after the break. The leader of Homestay Volunteer Teachers Organization School, located in rural Cambodia, has been an incredible motivator for Ross it King of great, Salt Spring Island. Sim Piseth, the manager and founder of HBTO School, has really impressed everyone, everyone who goes there. They get captivated by Sim and his kids. And it's the, the grassroots um, sustainability factor, I think, that has permeated into the into the local community, which is 10,000 strong, the group of uh, greater group of villages, permeated the population, and he essentially has spread the message that we're we're going to do this from the grassroots. We don't want necessarily NGOs coming in and telling us how to do it and this is our way and you will do it this way or not at all and this is what's so brilliant heartbreaking yes because quite a lot of them are orphans uh, and there was a huge AIDS epidemic just to add to their miseries uh, I think it's they've, they've got a handle on it now like, like I think they have in the rest of the world but uh, that demolished many families and it was, it was rampant there was no cure uh, so there are a lot of um, a lot of young orphans as a result of the AIDS epidemic. Effectively, Cambodia is mined from top to bottom, on one side to the other, and the effects have been devastating. They're still finding mines, uh, mostly by kids running around in the forest and having their limbs blown off amputees everywhere and the, the most touching was uh, when we came out of the I think it was the Angkor Wat temple complex it's there at the side of the road sitting under the shade of a tree was an amputee band and some of them were sightless some of them had half their faces missing legs missing some some you know crazed because of um, you know ex explosive damage to their brains um, it was a very sad sight to see and it's quite common the Cambodian families that Ross had observed were motivated by the simplest requirements, food, shelter, and water. Their first duty is to, is to, is to, is to subsist. Uh, there's a very strong connection, which is very interesting, between um, uh, water wells and the school, because uh, the water wells initiative um, started it was some many years ago in Cambodia. You know, non-government um, NGOs recognised the need to bring fresh water to rural areas, and uh, Sim Piseth, the Buddhist monk who started this, realised the connection that um, if the duty of the youngest children in a Cambodian family is to go and fetch water and to carry on fetching it, well, the water might be three, four, five kilometres away, and by bringing water water wells to the village, uh, which he strongly promoted in the early days of his program, it freed the kids up to have time for education. Fundraising, along with matching dollars from an English trust, is being coordinated by Ross through Sparks on Salt Spring Island. The abbreviation stands for Schooling Poor and Rural Cambodian Kids. He wanted to expand his school from 600 students to 1,200 students, and that's rather charming because his operation is so successful that all the people in sort of neighbourhood communes and, uh, uh, and counties are infiltrating their children into his area, staying with cousins and aunts and uncles, so as to get into his school. So there's a need to double the school. As the children get older, and they're now after six, seven years, they're beginning to move to the need for second secondary education, which can't be handled uh, in the village. The nearest secondary education is in the city of Siem Reap, uh, but it's too far away for them to make the, uh, the travels daily. And so the project that the English Trust and we are working on is to provide safe dormitory accommodation for kids at a very vulnerable age. Uh, and Cambodia is not the safest place. Um, very vulnerable age to uh, be safely housed in, um, uh, in Siem Reap. 
Volunteers, including a web designer, are required for Sparks, and donations from Salt Spring Island and other parts of BC will be sent directly to the Cambodian School. For further information, contact Ross King at 250-537-0666. We'll be back after a short break and we'll be telling you more about how you could assist school children in Cambodia through Ross King on Salt Spring Island. Well, growing up, summer camp is like a rite of passage for many teenagers. Raji Kabli went to Camp Shawnigan and met a fascinating 14-year-old. That story after the break. <laughs> Thank you for that truly heartwarming story, Raji. Well, up next, we're going to visit with one of the most enthusiastic naturalists on Vancouver Island, and she'll tell us about a creature that's hidden under the leafy debris at Goldstream Park. Ross King of Salt Spring Island has started Sparks, assisting with education for children in Cambodia. While teachers from other parts of the world sometimes volunteer, children also do their very best to teach each other. They are rapidly teaching each other a, a local patois of English. They can understand each other perfectly, but if they want to be tour guides in the Angkor Wat complex, which is the aspiration of most of them, then uh, uh, no one's going to be able to understand them in the lingua franca, which is English nowadays. I'm temp tentatively booked to go back next year. I was intrigued by it. I'm really looking forward because I sort of lost my heart to those kids. They, you know, they have nothing and they're so delightful and they're so eager to learn and improve themselves uh, to make their way in the world and, you know, get away from walking behind bullocks in a, in a rice paddy and uh, carrying water to the extent that they still do. And so, I really felt engaged in, uh, in, their, in their future and wanting to help. The first to get involved in fundraising for Sparks was the Fernwood School on Salt Spring Island, who began bottle drives. There will be another bottle drive on Saturday, September 6th, from 11 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. at the Country Grocer parking lot on Salt Spring Island. On Salt Spring Island, I have embarked on a campaign ab above and beyond the, the, the bottle drives, and I have, I'm going, going around wedding receptions and so forth, they please give us your bottles. And I, I'm well known now on Salt Spring Island as I almost feel like a Tony Soprano of waste management. <laughs> Anyone who wants to donate their bottles can just say, please donate to the Sparks Firmwood account. Firmwood being Firmwood School originally set up the account. We are working with an English trust, an acronym which is PUTE, um, and they have promised to match every dollar we raise, uh, dollar for dollar, up to 12,500 US dollars. And that is in progress now. We are working towards that, so every dollar we collect is two dollars to HVTO. And that is why we are pressing hard as one of our leading marketing uh, endeavors here is a dollar on Salt Spring is two dollars in. And that's why we want people to chip in and help. We don't want any of that grant allocation to be wasted. To donate to Sparks and assist the children of Cambodia, you may give to the Sparks account at the Ganges branch of the Bank of Montreal or contribute to the bottle drive on Saturday, September 6th from 11 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. at the Country Grocer parking lot on Salt Spring Island. Sparks founder Ross King may be reached at 250-537-0666. They're so bright and delightful, and they're, you know, they're, they're full of hope, and they're bright-eyed and they're eager. Uh, you, you couldn't help but you know, have your socks charmed off by them. Well, that's our program from gorgeous Salt Spring Island and this majestic Arbutus. We hope that you enjoy the rest of the summer. You'll be seeing James Green for the next few weeks, and I'll see you again at the end of September. In the meantime, be sure and let us know how you're enjoying the show, or if you have any story ideas, you'll find us on Facebook or Twitter, or give us an email. Bye-bye for now. Women's clothing provided by Tulip Noir, casual designer fashions. Men's Wardrobe by DG Bremner & Co. Men's Wear and Accessories. Hair Services provided by Salon J. 